Okay. Uh, Jafina, can you lead us in prayer? Uh, yeah, maybe John. John? Sure, sure, of course. Yeah, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for bringing us together to listen from your word. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak to us, help us to understand uh, the authority that we have, and as we continue to learn on this topic, we pray, O oh God, that you speak to our hearts, Lord Jesus. We also submit Pastor Nancy to your hands, and I pray, O oh God, that uh, you would enable her uh, to deliver your word. Um, in its fullness, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Thank you for that. Um, so we will get back to what we were studying in our uh, last class. But before that, uh, everything okay with the assignment? Uh, I know John shared there was some issue typo. So that uh, was corrected. Any other challenges? No, Pastor. I think it's good. It's okay, no? Okay, yeah. fine. That's good. That's good then. Great. So, yeah, please do go ahead and complete that uh, assignment. Um, yeah, you have sufficient time to do that. So we were in uh, chapter seven and we saw how, um, uh, you know, the enemy, there are different realms in which uh, we can take authority over the enemy. And uh, we had just started. We have authority over uh, Satan. We have authority over his works is evil works we have authority over demons um uh, and uh, you know the manifestation of these works are in the form of it can be uh, it can affect our mind or it can affect our bodies so the oppression can show up you know in in, in uh, these ways and since it can affect our bodies there can also be a sickness which is manifesting through the uh, demonic work so we have to recognize you know this is the way in which satan is is uh, coming against us take charge of that situation uh, and we can use our authority now how do we use our authority uh, we've seen so far that we can command we can say, you know, I come against you in the name of Jesus. We can uh, bind, we can lose. And if there is a demon spirit, okay, like in the case of uh, um, the girl that Paul met in Philippi in Acts chapter 16, it was through an individual who was possessed. So he had to cast out that demon spirit in order to um, see the manifestation of God's kingdom in that place so in the same manner in the same manner uh, we can also exercise our authority um, and you know apply it in whatever we are doing so uh, this could be something that we are not generally um, uh, utilizing but try to uh, you know uh, try to apply it in theory we know but uh, try as you discern from the spirit to say you know okay i rebuke i cast out i bind uh, in jesus name you know issuing commands you know, do things like that to uh, see that authority at work now demonic influences and we have seen this you know, we've studied this also at length we said over people individuals groups of people there can be uh, demonic influence world systems Okay, uh, political systems. It could be a demonic influence why certain things are playing out mm, in the field of business, uh, corruption, um, extortion, uh, you know, malpractices, uh, immorality in the world of business. So these things could not, they are not just through the individuals, but it could also be through demonic spirits that are at work. Family, media, arts, entertainment. So uh, Satan, he has influence over these realms. And therefore, we can sort of come against it and we can show 
God's power. So we've seen there were people like Joseph in his time during the period of lack. Uh, he enforced the kingdom of God through wisdom that God gave him. Uh, so we, we see that Moses from slavery and bondage, uh, Moses was somebody who was anointed to bring people out of that. Elijah, Elisha, through the manifestation of the supernatural works of God. Uh, and uh, Prophet Jeremiah, he talks about um, the word of God, which was given to him to build up, to tear down, to plant, to uproot. So he used the authority of God's word to prophesy to the nation and uh, see God's work being fulfilled. And also Daniel, we saw how he too was flowing. Uh, one is his character is commendable, his example that we can learn from. And the other is the way the power of God uh, was manifest through his life. And the um, the spiritual, uh, you know, the, the spiritual capabilities of seeing visions and dreams and interpreting. So he flowed in, in things like that, that uh, not only for his times, but we know that even for the end times, God gave him so much of revelation. Uh, so we see that in the midst of opposing uh, influences over world systems, men and women of God in times past have expressed you know god's power and they have seen god's kingdom what is god's kingdom god's kingdom is righteousness peace joy justice everything that that um demonstrates the character of god so all these people were able to demonstrate the kingdom of god in the midst of the opposing you know, demonic influences over the uh political um, uh, you know, the the business system, things that existed around them. So that gives us a lot of confidence. How much more after the cross you and I can actually walk in that form of authority. So uh, we have to understand that, yes, there are boundaries to what we can do, but then we can do so much. And there is uh, an extensive realm available for us to use our authority. So use it whenever we see something that is going against god uh, we see the works of the devil you know we come against that over geographical regions uh, we've seen that you know there is uh, a control that uh, uh, demons can take over an entire region so remember philippi is an example we saw pergamos you know, we saw how um, satan his seat is on pergamos so he can take control of an entire region but as god's people we can go against that and we can break that stronghold that he has over a region so we have influence we have influence uh, and of course later we'll see when it comes to exercising our authority um on let's say uh, a geographical area it is not just the work of an individual but it's more helpful to pray in groups to pray as a community to pray as a church uh, to pray as groups of churches as well you know it creates a lot of uh, power and we are able to disrupt the work of the devil over an entire geographic region so that's again a realm that we can function in and so uh, there's value to that in the past when you read about the revivals and all that you see over entire regions people raised up prayers people um, you know uh, they saw crimes happening this happening that happening they were able to stand up with the help of their authority against those things. So over geographic regions, we can do that. Over demonic habitations, remember, we said that there can be spaces that are, if you want to say, infected by demons. Uh, now we can take authority and we can cast out those spirits. Uh, I know a friend of mine, she is, uh, like she's, she's uh, very well placed in her, a role in, in the workplace and uh, she gets to travel often and wherever she goes she told me that she has this practice you know sometimes they are led to sites where she very clearly knows 
that hey there is a demonic presence here or uh, in the kind of work that is going on you know there is a demonic influence so as a believer she is not afraid of these things she wherever she goes wherever she travels if she senses hey there's a demonic presence here she immediately takes authority she prays it through you know she um, uh, she she speaks scriptures of protection over herself uh, and things like that so basically she's using her authority and then she's there to uh, work wise whatever she needs to do and uh, provide her expertise she does that and you know she comes back so there can be places know that have been dedicated to uh, demons and therefore this activity of these spirits but we can go against that then uh, over objects and artifacts uh, you know there are things that can carry um you know the the presence of these demons uh, we've already discussed it but i'm sharing it so that in a practical way we are able to use it so we have we already have authority over it isn't it so best is to not uh take it you know sometimes when people go traveling we purchase things so it's good to be a little ca- cautious and know what are these these articles do they have to do with some occult practices or you know some religious practices and all that so if there is an association avoid taking that now let's say somebody has taken it and because of the influence of that object uh, there is confusion in the house or there is strife in the house and all and when we have the sense it can be thrown out okay it it can be destroyed um uh, now in the book of ephesus uh, sorry in the city of ephesus we know that uh, when god's power was demonstrated so you see in acts uh, 19 where paul was demonstrating um, you know the demons were cast out and uh, you know god's glory was revealed in that way there were a lot of magicians sorcerers people who practiced um, you know sp- spiritual things in that manner uh, you read that they brought the articles that they had and they burnt it so in the city that practiced wicked things uh, of that sort when god's power was demonstrated through the life of apostle paul you know unusual miracles were done through him they even took handkerchiefs and people started getting healed so when they saw the real power of god what happens the people brought all their articles and they just burnt it up yeah, and you read about you know what a what a worth of money it it was for all these things that got destroyed but people were willing to uh, let go of the works of demons and follow after god so uh, sometimes these articles need to be destroyed okay um so yes we can while we are ministering also if at all there is um a prompting that there is such a thing which has to be uh, you should get rid of it then yes get rid of that uh, sometimes when we are ministering uh, to a person during deliverance <laughs> now we could be uh, trying to cast out the demon but the demon might keep saying no i'm not going i will not go this person has given me uh, authority and charge and i'm going to stay here you might notice that they have uh, uh, you know some articles on their body it could be a chain or a bracelet or something <coughs> which is what is a symbol of having dedicated this person to that spirit so to complete our process of deliverance we might need to tell the person of their own free will of course if can you please remove this if you would like to we are not forcing you if you want to remove it you remove it then we can fully cast out the demon so uh demons can influence through objects uh and uh, we can use this knowledge uh, to minister deliverance and you know enforce the authority of god so it's just for our understanding you know i'm sharing all this okay now uh over uh, occult expressions so there can be curses witchcraft sorcery you know things like that happening in certain regions but we've seen 
that God's power is greater. You remember Moses in the courts of Pharaoh, the sorcerers did their magic, but ultimately what Moses did, uh, it, it, it overpowered whatever the magicians were able to do. Even in the case of Elijah, there were the prophets of Baal who did so many uh, uh, amazing things. But what Elijah did at the end of the day stood out and it was victorious over any man demonic manifestation. So even today, we can expect that there are regions where I have heard testimonies of pastors who have planted churches, um, you know, that are surrounded with witchcraft. Uh, there are places surrounded by sorcery and there are threats to the to the congregation that meets there. But at the end of the day, you know, I heard one beautiful testimony where uh, a particular pastor, he has established his church and there are lots of such uh, you know magicians so apparently they came to disrupt the meeting they came to release their spirits and do stuff like that but during worship itself during worship time itself uh these sorcerers they got a headache and the demons were uh, pressing them to leave the place because they the demons were saying that we can't stand here please get out of here get out of here quickly so nothing happened they're not able to do anything about the pastor or the uh, congregation or their meetings because they're not even able to come into that zone because god is being exalted you know, the spirit and the presence of god is taking over that area so i mean think about all these things how the authority which we have in god uh, we can use it against demonic influences so don't get scared when you hear that such people exist and they are using uh, their demons against God's people. Uh, I think it's, uh, what is that thing? Do, one second, let me just get you that reference. Yeah, Numbers 23. <laughs> Numbers 23 and verse 23. Uh, let me just post the NKJV version of it for us. Yes, beautiful scripture. Uh, it says... So there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. Uh, it now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, oh, what God has done. Okay, so uh, these things will fall even if they rise against us. And that is our authority as God's children. Again, look at this. Old Testament, we had so much authority. Then how much more after the cross how much more uh, being filled with the holy spirit so don't get we should not get scared instead we should ask the holy spirit lord what do you want us to do and god might lead us okay lift up a praise or you know pray or bind lose command use it and we will see um, victory also over organizations institutions and similar to how we said over Mm, uh, politics over business there can be demonic influence even over certain organizations there could be uh, but we can use this is given for us realm of authority where we can use uh, you know our, our authority so we can use it in these zones now coming to doctrines of demons now in a sense it is important for us to know this uh, and especially during our times, because scriptures tell us that it says the last days, uh, but the last days is actually the time from when Jesus rose from the dead until now. So we are in the last days from that period onwards. But scriptures do talk about how there will be a rise in uh doctrines of demons okay there will be teachings that spirits 
will bring which all kinds of teachings okay there is the spirit of antichrist which will deny that jesus is christ now how will the spirit deny that jesus is christ by saying things like oh he was not fully human you know he had some supernatural powers and that's how he was never fully human or the flip side he was never fully god he was only human so there are these demonic teachings out there philosophies out there which are turning people's hearts away from god and in the last days and especially in the last of the last days we can expect a lot of such teachings now what is the true test does it really uh, does the teaching help us to uh, know jesus christ for who he is does it cause us to worship him if it is then we know that the holy spirit is in alignment to uh, that sort of a teaching but if the teaching is in contradiction in any way to acknowledging christ and worshiping him in spirit and in truth then we know that this has been uh, <coughs> sorry developed by uh, demonic spirits and uh, believers have to be established in god's word you know what is one of the signs of our maturity we are not tossed around by every wind of doctrine the scripture says so one who is mature is firm and strong in the foundations of our doctrine who is god what is the trinity who is the father the son the holy spirit the lord jesus christ his humanity his deity um uh he uh, lived he did the will of the father he healed he uh, he did his supernatural works he died he was buried he rose from the dead then the baptism you know, the baptism in the holy spirit the works of the holy spirit the early church we are clear on all these things such that every new wave you know of some teaching that is actually drawing us away from uh the worship of god in spirit and in truth you know we are able to counter that now as believers taking authority how do you come against these demonic uh, uh, doctrines you see the bible says that satan blinds the eyes of the people okay so we can take authority over the blindness that demon spirits put on the spiritual eyes of people and say god we pray in jesus name that you will open their eyes to see the truth and so when we start warring like this in the spiritual realm recently i've had parents uh, talking to me and saying you know our kids they are slowly going away from the faith because uh, they have their own questions yeah what about this you know uh, nothing wrong in asking questions and finding logical answers but you know in contradiction like uh, to who christ is or uh, you know it it in fact uh, more specifically it was about the the timings and the years in in the in the bible and how uh that is not Uh, lining up with what some of the scientists say and so you know the bible is an error uh, so so many things like that that the the kids are caught up okay, and uh, drawn away because they don't have someone to explain uh, in a in a correct way so uh, you see that there is a need there is a need for us to always pray lord you know their spiritual eyes we pray that it will be open our young people let their spiritual eyes be open whatever satan is doing to blind their eyes draw them away from you we come against that in jesus name and uh, so you know begin to pray and i'm just telling you how we can use our spiritual authority you can also command that blindness to come off of their eyes uh, and more and more you know so that people are kept in the faith because we can only see uh, wrong teachings increasing you know, as days go by and also we are told that there is something known as messengers of satan uh, in acts 13 if you remember there is a bar jesus or elimus 
who is uh, preventing um, uh, Sergius policies, one of the leaders uh, in, in the government office. This sorcerer is preventing this leader from accepting the gospel. So Paul and Barnabas go and minister uh, the, the word of God and share about Jesus. But something spiritually that the sorcerer is doing is not allowing Sergius Paulus to accept Christ. Then Paul, he takes authority. You know, he uh, rebukes this uh, Elemas. And uh, once Elemas is out of the scene, Paulus is open to accepting the gospel. So there can be some messengers of Satan, they're called as you know, messengers of Satan, messengers of light, okay, another word. And sometimes it appears like they are doing the right thing and they are uh, drawing us closer to God, but not really. So we have to be discerning of such individuals and uh, if need be, take authority against uh, you know certain people who are messengers of Satan. And once they are dealt with, people are set free to accept Christ and to walk uh, their spiritual walk with the Lord. So these are all our realms of uh, authority where we can use it. So, so far we've seen, you know, uh, the works of the devil is, is one realm. So in the mind, the body, we can use our authority. Uh, over influences, we can use our authority. So we've seen various uh, ways the influence of the enemy comes in and we can use our authority. Uh, we can also use it against these doctrines of demons that are created or people, messengers of Satan, who may also bring it. Now, we can use our authority over sickness, disease and death. Uh, Matthew 10 verses 1, 7 and 8. This is given in our notes. Would somebody like to read it? Matthew 10. Verses 1, 7, and 8, please. Matthew 10 was 1, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Verse 7, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, John. And it's so clear there, no? That he gave them authority uh, to heal the sick raise the dead, cleanse the leper, uh, and also cast out demons. So we see that we have authority over sickness. We have authority over death as well. Okay, In some instances, you know, we are able to raise people from the dead. And so we can use that authority as being led by God. We have authority over circumstances and situations. We've already talked a lot about binding and losing, where we are using the keys of the kingdom to uh, release the kingdom. So anything in opposition to the kingdom, we have authority to, to uh, you know, bind and lose. And over natural elements. So I know in the last class, I just ran over this, so I'm touching it uh, a little more in detail. Over natural elements, we saw how Jesus walked on the water, which was uh, in opposition to uh, the law of gravity. Right? Obviously, everything that goes up, it has to come down. Uh, so even like when he's on water, he needs to go in. Right? But then you see that that didn't happen. He was still walking on the water. Um, so a natural law was being defied. Or, you know, the fig tree, it doesn't, you don't find something that is still alive, just dry up overnight, but it happened to the fig tree. And we know that it was something surprising because the disciples were amazed at what happened. So, unnatural. Okay. So, the fig tree, wither. we saw how a storm, in a moment, a raging storm 
stopped. How does that happen? It's supernatural. We saw how food got multiplied. Uh, a few uh, fishes, a few loaves could feed thousands of people. Unnatural, or let's use the word supernatural. And uh, Jesus, he asked his uh, disciples when they had to go and pay taxes to go and uh, find money in the mouth of a fish. How do you get your how do you get your tax paid like that? Supernatural. So it's not normal, in other words, or uh, in accordance to your regular uh, way of doing life. So when we see things like this, we know that Jesus was exercising his authority in all these areas such that even the natural principles were defied on occasions when it was necessary to do so. Uh, and similarly, you know, today, when uh, we as a church, we are serving, uh, John 14, verse 12, it says that you shall do greater things than these. And that's the promise which God has given to us. Why can we do greater things? Jesus said, uh, because I go to my Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works I do, these are all the works which he did, he will do also and greater works than these he will do because I go to the to my father. So we can move uh, in supernatural manifestations of God's power, uh, which can also define the normal and the natural. How do we do this? Again, we said the way you release your authority, you command you uh, step in with an action like Jesus gave thanks and then what did he do? He broke bread and he's breaking and breaking. You know, this, the food multiplied. So these are all ways in which we can release that authority. He spoke to the storm. He said, be, peace, be still. He released the authority and it happened. So uh, we too can see the natural being defied when it is required okay uh, now this is we we really have to be cautious in this area and i think i've already told us that that uh, this is not so that we can uh, do whatever pleases us so it's not for our whims and fancies but it is more for uh, you know god's glory Okay, and uh, I don't know if you have ever experienced uh, situations like this in ministry, but we can expect. There are a couple of times certain things have happened that uh, I can only register as supernatural. Uh, so there was once in our, uh, we serve at the North Church here, and uh, after service, uh, those times we had our African brothers, so there were a lot of people, and we had decided we are going to stay back and uh, you know, have have a cleaning time. We will have the cleaning time. We clean up the church and all before we lock up and leave. So uh, only when we closed, I realized that uh, it was a lot of work. Like it's not going to get over quickly because after that we had our Kannada service. So one Kannada pastor used to come with all the Kannada people. So then there it was time for their service to start. So then our team decided, okay, we will stay back till the Canada service is over. And we were all so hungry. We were like, oh no, we, we should have planned to get lunch. Uh, and it so happened that the Canada church had planned for lunch for their group. And it was a big group. So somebody from the congregation said, okay, we are going to cook for everyone. So they had sort of calculated and prepared food only for their people. So this Canada pastor came to me after the service got over. He said, sister, you don't worry. We will pray. We will serve. Okay, you don't worry. I think we can manage. So we prayed and these women are serving and serving and serving and serving. There was so much food. All of them ate, including our large team that had waited for uh, lunch. And uh, like for me, I know that it was not normal because... 
those two women had cooked from their home and not like they had cooked excess but something supernatural about that afternoon that the food was more than enough for the whole kannada congregation and our volunteer team until today i think wow as they were serving i don't know whether the food <laughs> multiplied or what but we prayed for the supernatural that day and you know something like that happened so you know th- things like this we can expect i also remember just to encourage us i'm just sharing some incidents uh, i remember in my college this was close to my final exams and uh, one subject they required uh, a record book you know your lab and record uh, book so f- throughout the year we had practicals and everyone had a quota so we completed the quota it was a huge quota i completed the entire quota it was my final year and that record book needed to be submitted before we go for exams and in my college we had lockers uh, uh, and i shared the locker with one of my friends and i we both know where we keep our record books so it was very much there i got the signature of my lecturer and everything was ready but to my surprise you know over a week there were a couple of things happening some painting going on in my house and all and to my surprise that record book is not there and in a few days i have to submit my record book so i'm so shocked i was like god what happened you know obviously i don't remember did i bring it home and in the painting did it get misplaced i'm searching 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 didn't find the record book and i panicked because my whole four years of studies will one subject if i don't make it so anyway long story short that it was not in my house then i went to my college the locker i'm searching 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 uh, my friend also helped me together we searched some other friends also helped me and it's not there it's not there in my locker so i just uh, i think uh, it was almost close to the day that i had to go and submit a book and i prayed i said lord you are a creator you can create from nowhere it's not in my house for sure it's not in my locker for sure because you know multiple people have helped me search it i don't know what i'm going to do but i'm going to go today and i'm going to open the locker and i want my record book there with all the signatures and you will not believe it i believe it because it has happened to me i went and i opened my locker and the record book was on top i've been searching my friend has been searching and it was just exact i prayed and i said lord i want that book i want it i don't know what you're going to do i want that book i've done my work i want that book it's right on top my record book i just went picked it up you know went and submitted it you know and obviously you know i finished my my final year and all but whenever i think of it it's so supernatural for me because i knew that it didn't exist but then it existed after my prayer so i'm just saying there is a realm that we can walk in the way jesus said to uh, you know mary martha uh, to martha yeah i think or mary i don't know he said if you believe you will see the glory of god so when we are stuck in situations and sometimes you need the supernatural to take place we have to believe and say god it's not normal i know but i also know that you can do it so believe believe god does the impossible sometimes and it's hard to explain also how it is possible okay so just encouraging us now the flip side of this is that you don't see you know jesus because he could multiply bread and fish you don't see him starting a restaurant like every day oh i'm to supernatural food supernatural breakfast lunch uh, all of you whatever you know 30 rupees a plate he could have done that isn't it because power of god is flowing he can do it but you don't see jesus going against the natural so he did respect the natural yes as a one off thing when there was a need food was multiplied 
you don't see jesus using only wa- you know walk on water transport okay peter i'll see you and he's walking on the water all the time no you don't see that as a one of the you notice that okay jesus walked on water regularly what do you find he was taking the boat or he was walking with his disciples so there are certain natural laws that had been given to us coin it was in the fishes mouth but i am expected to work hard isn't it and earn my money so respect the natural but if it comes to a situation where um you need god to move on your behalf and you just don't know how it's going to happen but lord you do the impossible believe because he can do it okay? so that's how we take our authority uh, just take your authority even if there are natural elements right working against us and we will see god's glory so that's about the realms where we have authority i'll just pause for a moment to um see if there's any points of discussion that you all want to bring up we will move ahead after that so uh again you know i think it's quite plain uh for us to understand these things but uh, just want to open it up has anyone ex- used your authority to see the supernatural in your circumstance if you would like to share that the class as i'll share one story it's yes please be funny you know Uh-huh. not very uh, <laughs> very big but very the minor one. okay so no, it was no, no um I, i think it was in 2012 or so um my brother had bought a laptop uh, and uh, so the switch to turn on the laptop was not in the usual place so i asked him so he said no you you will find out he said i looked <laughs> everywhere i couldn't find out okay then that night i prayed and slept okay god show me where it is then at night for the surprise i saw the image of the laptop exactly where the button is it was it was quite behind the lid which we cannot see at all uh, it, so it's manufactured like that <laughs> and morning i uh, found out that this is the, i mean at night i found out that this is the switch and i told my brother that this is the switch and how did you find it i said i prayed <laughs> that's uh, what's the yeah praise god uh, yeah thank you for sharing uh, john you know that's yeah that's incredible that you got the answer through prayer yeah praise god praise god so uh, yeah let's let's uh, go ahead and do this in any prayer is also another way right for us to begin releasing our authority so we find ourselves in Uh, any situation you can just pray and say lord you know help me show me the way out and uh, god will minister to us okay so uh, maybe one more person azali do you have any stories of yours uh well i just want to share uh, a little bit uh yeah. when i was going to cambodia uh, to be a tent making missionary in my bank account i don't have even a penny but i just uh, said god i'm trusting you i'm depending on you and i'm stepping out by faith and surprisingly by the grace of god the people whom i don't know in person they are the one depositing into my account and blessing me and i was able to go forward and you know minister in cambodia for 2 years so it's amazing how god provides and god answers our prayer it's just mind blowing i mean like it's just amazing yeah god uh, supernaturally provided my needs praise god for that 
Wow, thank you. Thank you, Zali. Thank you for sharing. It really stirs up faith in us, uh, how God provides supernaturally for his children. Praise God. Um, anyone else you want to share your uh, story? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, Paul. Yeah, I also have a story. A story. In yes, please go 2013. ahead. Yeah, in 2013, there was a church project and they wanted people to contribute. They wanted $100. But in my country, we don't use dollars, we use shillings. So in my life, I'd never handled even a dollar. But they say, by faith, you, you come and take the envelope, whoever is ready to contribute. So I was wondering where I would get the $100, but I took faith, I went and got the envelope. Then I went to a place of work. After one week, because they had given us two weeks, uh, somebody came and asked me to give, give her some assistance. And he said, this assistance which you're going to give me, I'm going to give you $200. I said, ah, for the first time, I'm handling a dollar. So I was able to get the dollar. I took the 100 to church, then the 100 remained for me. So that is what God did supernaturally. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Paul. So encouraging. You know, you can't, uh, the timing is incredible, no? Just when you needed it. So, praise God. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing those stories. And I uh, encourage you to continue to believe. You know, I've heard stories from certain ministries uh, about how they went to give gifts to uh, children. And they had very few gifts in, uh, in a bag. And they started giving the gifts. But the number of children were more. So the person who was giving the gifts, she just prayed and said, Lord, you know, let there be enough gifts for all the children. And then similar to Jesus breaking the bread, she goes ahead and she's just giving and giving and giving and giving and giving. And, giving and that the bag never really becomes empty. So... Uh, and especially you know, as each one of you is stepping out in ministry, you can believe. You can believe. Do the normal hard work and planning and uh, calculation, budgeting. Do all that. We are not saying don't do it because that's also God teaching us to be, uh, you know, wise. But in addition to that, put our faith in God. And where required, use your authority. Uh, maybe we are traveling and I've done this I've gone on missions to a particular place and it started raining and uh, I went with one of our girls so I said come on let's pray stop the rain in Jesus name and all that we were able to take the bus back home so certain natural things you can exercise your authority over it and see uh, God's power manifest okay so let's go ahead and take a break uh, class we'll come back and then we will move into our uh, next chapter here which is about the strategies of a defeated enemy so let's go for a break thank you